Let's talk about D.B. Cooper and the FBI flight path. Hey friends, how you doing? Eric Gillis here. Let's talk about the FBI flight path today. Okay, uh, this is a subject that I've talked about quite a bit. Anybody who knows me knows that I dwell on this a lot, that, that, that flight path, that FBI flight path. And the reason why is because really it's the linchpin of the entire mystery. I've said before that if you've got the flight path wrong, it's going to be very difficult ultimately to solve the mystery of D.B. Cooper. And I think that there are a few things that indicate pretty clearly in my mind that the FBI flight path actually is wrong. Now, I'm not saying it's wrong like 100 miles wrong or anything like that. I'm just simply saying that I believe that the jet was actually eight or nine miles to the west of where the FBI thinks that the jet was. So let's talk about this today. What I'm calling the top three things that indicate that the FBI flight path is wrong. Okay, so number three is, well, the flight path. And let me show you what I mean. So this first picture here, this first picture of this yellow map is the original yellow map uh, from the FBI files uh, that actually show the path of the jet during the critical region of it uh, taking off from just south of, uh, well, from Seattle and heading south over the Vancouver, Washington, and Portland, Oregon area. This is the region, this is the area of the flight path where D.B. Cooper actually jumped. Uh, you can see that black felt tip line kind of down the squiggling down the center of it. That's the actual flight path. That's, what, that's the path that the FBI believes that the jet took. You can see uh, that kind of yellowish highlighted area in the center. Uh, that's Vancouver, Washington and Portland, Oregon. So that should give you an idea of kind of the scale of the region and, and kind of what we're talking about here. But for our purposes today, what I want to do is I want to zoom in on that, that part of the flight path that's uh, over and near Vancouver, Washington, and Portland, Oregon. So let me show you another map here. Uh, okay, and this map here uh, was actually created by uh, Dr. Bob Edwards, who recently published a book about the D.B. Cooper case. And the reason I'm using his, his map here is because actually it illustrates pretty clearly the flight path, the believed flight path according to the FBI uh, near the, uh, again, Vancouver, Washington, Portland, Oregon area. Now, if you look kind of near the, the center there, the lower center, you'll see it says KPDX. That's the Portland International Airport. That's PDX. And let's zoom in on that real quick. Throw up another image, just give you an idea of kind of the scale of the map here. So that, you know, there's the Portland International Airport, Columbia River to the north and so forth. So let's zoom back out and show uh, Dr. Edwards' um, uh, map again. So, uh, and to help kind of give you a better idea of the scale of the map we're talking about here, from the very top of the map to the very bottom of the map in a straight line, if you draw a straight line, that's about 19 miles. So that's, that's the size of the region here. So... Um, the problem in my mind uh, relates to just the path itself. You can see that there were several turns that the jet apparently took. And some of these are relatively sharp. You've got to remember, you've got to consider that this is a Boeing 727 airliner flying with its landing gear down, flying with its flap down, flying with uh, the back uh, air stairs hanging in the in the slipstream, that's hanging down, that's open. The jet is unpressurized. It's flying at about 10,000 feet, which is pretty low, obviously. Uh, and it's flying quite slow, about 200 miles an hour. So it's just barely lumbering along, not too fast or too far above, frankly, at stall speed. So when you look at the supposed turns that this jet took at this particular part, it just doesn't look to me like a, an air, airliner. It doesn't look like the Boeing <laughs> commercial airliner right there, especially one flying under the conditions that I just stipulated there. And these were demands and things that D.B. Cooper himself made. In fact, there have been people that have plugged in the data and put this flight path in a flight simulator for 727 and tried to replicate some of these pretty sharp turns here and have been unable to do it. So it's actually debatable whether or not the jet flying in the conditions that I just specified there could actually make some of the sharp turns and things that it apparently it apparently made. The other important thing to remember here as far as this goes 
is the jet wasn't on autopilot. Clearly, this is an autopilot. No, no autopilot's gonna fly a jet like that. But, but having said that, uh, the co-pilot for the jet was a guy named Bill Ratacek. And Bill Ratacek actually hand flew the jet shortly after taking off from Seattle, hand flew the jet all the way down to Reno. And the reason that he hand flew the jet is because when those back air stairs were lowered by D.B. Cooper several minutes after taking off from Seattle, the pilots weren't exactly sure how the jet was going to respond to having this big, heavy air stair apparatus kind of hanging down uh, in the back of the jet from underneath the fuselage. So they just didn't want, excuse me, they just didn't want the jet on, on autopilot because they weren't, weren't really sure what to expect. So Bill said that he was hand flying the jet. And I talked to Bill about this. Bill told me this himself. He said he flew the, hand flew the jet down there. And I asked Bill about this particular part of the flight path, because obviously there are a number of turns and so forth. And I said, does this, does this look familiar? I mean, does this, does this sound like kind of how you flew the jet? And his response to me that is that he, was that he didn't recall flying the jet in that way. Now, that's not concrete proof or evidence or what have you, but uh, for what it's worth, Bill Ratajkowski said that he doesn't recall flying the jet that way. Essentially, presumably, he was largely trying to fly the jet in a straight line. And there were a couple of turns along the ways, obvious along the way, obviously. But uh, the name of the game is to fly the jet in a straight line. Again, remember, this is a you know very scary situation for these guys. As far as they know, they've got a guy hanging out in the back there with a briefcase with a bomb on it. And I look at some of these turns, and, and they would have, frankly, have had to have been so sharp to such a degree that I, I would be concerned about the damn bomb falling off the chair, the briefcase falling off the chair and, and de detonating or something along those lines. I mean, they don't really know, you know how the bomb is situated in the back. They don't know what's going on. And it's also interesting when you consider that D.B. Cooper made it very clear that he didn't want any funny stuff as far as the pilots or anybody was, was concerned. And the pilots took this to heart. They, 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 you know, they played ball uh, with Cooper according to D.B. Cooper's rules. So uh, to me, I can just imagine Cooper hanging out in the back if he's still in the back at this point and the jet kind of making sharp left turn, sharp right turn, all this kind of stuff. I'd be thinking... What the hell is going on here? So uh, the flight path itself just doesn't look right to me. So that's the number three reason. So the number two thing that uh, indicates in my mind that the FBI flight path is wrong is the fact that nothing has ever been found along the FBI flight path or near the FBI flight path after 50 years. Um, that's a very big problem in my mind. This area here uh, has a lot of people around. Uh, it's not all neighborhoods or whatever, but there are certainly many people living in the area there. There have been an awful lot of hunters, a lot of people hiking, a lot of people actually out there looking for D.B. Cooper. Law enforcement itself has been out in mass multiple times along that flight path looking for something, anything related to D.B. Cooper. And thus far, after over 50 years, they found exactly, bingo, nada, zip, zero, nothing. Absolutely nothing to indicate he was ever there. Now, this is very problematic in my mind because if the guy had died, well, you would assume that you would have found the body at a minimum. Uh, the parachutes that he jumped with are also problematic because those things are heavy. Like the one on his back is like 35 pounds heavy. And I'm, you know, there's no reason for the guy to haul this thing out of the woods with him, with the 22 pounds of cash, and be tooling down the road carrying this parachute and everything else. It just makes sense in my mind that he would try to stash that parachute there. Not to mention the briefcase and the other parachute, because he jumped with a dummy reserve parachute as well. So the fact that there's been nothing ever found in that area there that indicates at all that D.B. Cooper was ever there is a very big problem, and I think that's the number two thing indicating in my mind that the FBI flight path is wrong. So here now, the number one thing that I think that points to the FBI flight path being wrong is the Tina Bar money find. <laughs> that's right. So let's throw up another map here. Okay, now this map is a little different. Uh, it's basically the same yellow map that we showed earlier that's the FBI flight path map, but I've got a few lines on it that I've created. 
Uh, you see one that's highlighted that says Western Flight Path. That's the path that I actually believe that the jet took, something very close to that. You see there's another line uh, that show, that's noted FBI Flight Path. Again, that's the path that the, the FBI believes that the jet took. But importantly, look at the spot that mentions the money find spot, the little the spot on the map, money find spot that's underneath the blue line, underneath the Western Flight Path line. You can see that where the money was actually found, buried in the sand along the Columbia River, is about eight or nine miles west of where the FBI actually thinks that the jet flew. Now, this is a very big problem because money doesn't have little money legs and money doesn't, you know, land and then just like catch a cab or whatever and go to Tina Bar and bury itself. So explaining how the money managed to get from the region or the area in and around the FBI flight path to Tina Bar is very problematic. And I should note that you see where the FBI actually thinks D.B. Cooper jumped, or you saw where you, th you think the FBI thinks that D.B. Cooper jumped here. Uh, as the crow flies, it's about 20 miles away. It's about 20 miles as the crow flies from where they believe that area where D.B. Cooper jumped is and where the actual money was found. And the thing about the money is that's hardcore physical evidence. Like that's, there's no room for error as far as that goes. The money was found where it was found, and we know for sure that this was a portion of D.B. Cooper's ransom. So I think that's the number one biggest tell, the number one biggest thing indicating that the FBI flight path is wrong. So that's all I've got for you today, folks. Obviously, of course, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to shoot me an email at eric at ericulis.com. I'd love to hear your comments with respect to this. Again, this is a hotly debated subject. Uh, I'm in the minority as far as this goes. Most people tend to believe that the FBI flight path is correct, including Dr. Bob Edwards, the, the person who sketched up or drew up the one map that I showed a little bit earlier here. But I'm one of those people that thinks, no, something's not right here. Something doesn't pass the smell test here. The FBI flight path is wrong. I think the true flight path is much closer to that, that Western flight cat path, the version of the Western flight path that I depicted earlier. All right, folks, have a good day. And until next time, cheers.